All right, I think we're ready to get started for the deep dive this morning. Welcome to everybody joining. It's Monday, June 13th. Uh, and if you saw the post, we're going to talk about inflation. You know, inflation came out on Friday. A lot of people asking questions about that and its impact on home ownership. So we're going to talk about that. As always, let us know where you're watching from this morning on the deep dive. So many folks from across the country join and uh, love seeing them, love seeing everybody uh, get on the deep dive. I'll watch here and uh, and follow along as well. So hope you are having a great Monday morning. Uh, we are excited to kick the deep dive off here uh, this morning. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for joining. I'm going to open up my deep dive here. Lee, see you there from Los Angeles. Laura from Seattle. Great to have you on. Uh, folks joining, we're going to give it a minute or so before we hop into the slides and hop into everything uh, on inflation. You know, I'm also going to cover another topic. Somebody um, uh, last week asked a question relative uh, to prices and, you know, sort of uh, the deceleration topic. We're going to cover that at the end, too. So I've got uh, several slides that you're going to want to use uh, this week as you talk about things, as you get out there with the message, you know, and, and I don't say this often, but, you know, KCM members get access to everything that we talk about. So, you know, all the slides from the deep dive, everything that we do each Monday morning, uh, is accessible in the KCM member area. There's actually an archive if you haven't been in uh, for the deep dives, which includes, you know, the replay of that. You can go watch it. You can grab all the slides and go back for several weeks and watch those if you've, uh, if you've missed them. So as always, if you haven't started a KCM free trial, uh, do that and, uh, and get this message out there. Uh, Charlotte, see you there. Holly Hatch, good to have you on this morning. Uh, Holly, thankful for all the support you give us, what we do at KCM. Uh, Robin, uh, everybody, Myra from South Carolina, uh, Scott, good to see you uh, out there in Santa Monica, not in the panhandle this morning. Uh, so, so many good folks on, uh, great to see everybody across the country. If you did see the update that I did, uh, we're going to talk about inflation this morning. You know, uh, inflation came out on Friday, 8.6% higher than what, you know, analysts had uh, said it would be. So we're going to talk about that. What do you say in those scenarios? You know, we released uh, last week a, a new tool at KCM called Real Talk. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute at the end of this call. If you haven't tried it, go check it out. But this week, we're going to release, you know, a script on inflation. So if you want to build uh, a video on this topic, you need to get Real Talk. These scripts are built based on what's happening in the market so that you can deliver that. You know, just, just hold your phone up here, record the message, have the visual in there and get that message out. But let's start this topic this morning. I'm gonna share my screen here. I've got a quote uh, from the Washington Post and it says this, the low rates of the last few years were an anomaly. We could probably stop right there and just say, hey, let's talk about that. Let's get that in people's heads. The low rates of the past few years were an anomaly. A combination of freakishly low interest rates and the Federal Reserve's intervention in the bond and mortgage-backed security market. Now, the Fed has ended quantitative easing and is raising rates. That's a Fed funds rate. But what really matters is what's happening to the 10-year bond yield because that determines mortgage rates. So inflation comes out. You know, if you remember, we've said this before on the deep dive, inflation is the enemy of long-term interest rates. So we want to look at the 10-year treasury yield. This is the most up-to-date uh, version of that. I updated this slide this morning, the 10-year treasury, when I looked at it at 3.26%. And, you know, over the last uh, couple of days, certainly since that, that in inflation rating, bond market's off on the weekends, but we've seen this rising trend. So 10-year treasury rate is going up. And, and what do you want to look at? The average as of Thursday on the, um, on the, the weekly monitor, 5.23% in the average 30-year fixed. Expect that, you know, when it comes out next week, I think it'll be a little bit higher as, as the 10-year treasury uh, is going up. Here's what we need to communicate to people right now, that as we watch this, we can't control a lot of things with inflation. We can, we can give the best information to folks on the housing market, and that's what the message is right now, right? Control what we can control. And here would be my message. For the last 50 years, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10-year treasury rate, right? Going back to that, if you haven't gotten that information out there, if you know that, don't assume the people you're working with know that, okay? And, and let them know you're following that. You subscribe to a service, Keeping Current Matters. You don't have to say that, but I subscribe to a service that keeps me on top of this. And what do I know right now? The 10-year treasury rate is going up, okay? 
So we want to continue to, to, to watch that because this inflation question is top of mind for everybody. You know, you can't go to the, the gas pump or the grocery store or whatever the, the case may be and not feel the effect of rising prices and inflation. And certainly uh, it has folks, uh, it, you know, consumers worried. You know, if you look at consumer sentiment, it is down right now. And folks saying, okay, what is going to, uh, to happen with all of this? So one of the plays that we know that works is what is our approach and what is our messaging around inflation? Well, I'll start here with a quote from Investopedia. Real estate is one of the time-honored inflation hedges. It's a tangible asset, and those tend to hold their value when inflation reigns, unlike paper assets, more specifically as prices rise, so do property values. You know, we talked last week about rising prices. In the real estate business, they are a gift, right? You own a piece of property and the price is rising on that, that is a good thing. And you know, forecasters are saying this year around 9% appreciation in residential real estate. Uh, but, but this topic we'll get to in a minute of deceleration in the market will be talked about. So I want to kind of you know break this down. You hear about inflation, you hear about deceleration, you go, okay, maybe this isn't the right time to buy a home. But you know, the graphic that I would always coach you to use in a time like this, if you want to get an inflation me uh, message out, is this one that we've used before, home ownership as a hedge against inflation. And we did a study at KCM going all the way back to the 70s and looking at the average inflation rate in the decade and the average home price appreciation and decade after decade, home prices outperform inflation. You can go all the way back to the 70s, look at the 80s, neck and neck there, the 90s outperforming, slightly more uh, inflation in the early 2000s, but that was during the housing crisis. Uh, and then you see the rest of the 2010s and certainly in the last couple of years, home prices have significantly outperformed inflation. In an inflationary economy, you want to be invested in something that outperforms inflation. So that certainly is a message and a graphic that I would be getting out in the market right now um, as you, uh, you deliver this message. And again, this Thursday on Real Talk, we'll be bringing you a script where you can record uh, a video based on this and get this out there. Okay, so, so be prepared for that. Now let's, let's sort of shift gears here and let's talk about deceleration. This is something that's going to continue to be talked about in the real estate business. You know, the first half of this year, you know, certainly the real estate business was defined by rising interest rates and that sort of, you know, squelching uh, the frenzy in the market, you know, not seeing prices rise as, as fast as they have, starting to see more inventory come on the market. And this is what, you know, maybe some of the national and local headlines are going to read we, we pulled a couple here recently the cooling housing market enters into the great deceleration home prices decelerate as the housing market downshifts so expect to see that that deceleration word out there uh, uh you know uh as it pertains to real estate all over in articles and talking heads and people that are talking about real estate right now and our job is to combat some of those headlines you know we always say Headlines do more to terrify than to clarify what's going on. And here's the bottom line. Decelerating home prices do not mean depreciating home prices. But, but I think sometimes when people hear that, they think that. They think depreciation when they see deceleration. So you hear inflation, you hear about the real estate market slowing down, and you know the peak is over, and all the sensationalized uh, things that are out there about real estate you know, I read an article that just came out this morning that was published by NAR, and they are forecasting this year will be the second highest number of homes sold only behind last year in the last 15 years. Now, I haven't gone through the, the whole report right now, but very, very, still a very, very strong market there. And if you're not careful, depending on who you're listening to, you may think, you know what, this is turned and, and there's, there's not opportunity. Many people that have been looking for a home, this is their opportunity. For somebody that's, that's serious, that's looking to do something, this is their opportunity. You know, the Home Price Expectation Survey comes out every quarter. We stay on top of that for you uh, as, uh, you know, keeping current matters. Certainly, if you're a member, you're, you're familiar with the Home Price Expectation Survey. Well, here's what they're saying for the next five years going forward, all the way to 2026. 
9% appreciation this year, then 4%, 3%, 3%, 4%, you know, a more normal appreciation in the coming years. So people that are thinking, would I want to buy right now? Um, use this, the, this information to say there is no indication that, uh, you know, prices are going to fall because of the demand that's still pushing home ownership. There are far more people that want to buy a home in this country right now. There are available homes for them to buy. And Certainly builders are building and people are thinking about selling their homes and all that. We're seeing more inventory come into the market, but there's still a tremendous amount of de uh, demand that's going to keep upward pressure on prices. You know, I, I think that's a, that's a critical message right now because certainly headlines tell a different story about the real estate business and we need to be the knowledge broker and get that message out there to the clients we serve. I'll wrap up with this. Washington Post says all of this suggests that you can't time the market or the future of interest rates. If you're waiting for rates to fall, you may be waiting for a long time. There are a lot of people saying, I'm going to wait until prices fall. I'm going to wait until rates fall. If you're doing that, you may be waiting a long, long time. So I, wanted, I told you I was going to talk about Real Talk for just a minute and a webinar we have coming up. If you haven't registered for that, I want you to register for it. But if you haven't tried Real Talk, go in and try a free trial of that. You can go to trykcm.com forward slash Real Talk. You know, this is the app on your phone with a built in teleprompter, the scripts, the visuals, you hit done, and you've got a video to deliver to the clients you serve on the market so that you can stay up to date. You can keep them up to date as the market expert. We have a free webinar tomorrow, Real Video, Real Simple, the ultimate guide to video marketing. If you put off being on video, we want to help you get there. We want you to create videos that you need to be the expert for the community you serve. So if you haven't uh, registered for that, um, uh, go ahead and register for that. I'm sure there'll be a link in the comments to uh, register for that uh, tomorrow. You don't want to miss that. So I'm going to pause for a second. Aaron, do we have questions uh, that people are asking? Yeah, we have a couple questions. Jennifer, the buyers think prices will drop. Sure. So why are they hesitating if interest is just going to drop? Gosh, that's a great question. There are probably better people uh, you know, on this call to answer that. So I, I'm going to try to repeat that question. If, if interest rates are going to rise, prices are going to continue to rise, why do buyers think that prices are going to fall? Is that, is that the, the, the yeah. estimation? Yeah. I, I think that, Jennifer, that's a really good question. And, and here's what I would say. You know, if you even follow the markets, this morning something interesting happened. The yield curve inverted which that a lot of times is a precursor, what most economists and most market experts would say, a precursor to a recession coming. So what, what do buyers and sellers you know, see? They see what's happened in the last couple of years in the housing market, tremendous you know, growth in home prices, this frenzy feels like what happened back in 2008. Now they hear slowdown coming, they hear the peak is over and they think, you know what, prices are going to fall. And so I think, I think, Jennifer, it's a really good question. And, and what I think we have to do is educate those that think that on what really is happening. You know, I'll go back to that home price expectation survey. My first question would be if somebody thinks that home prices are going to fall or interest rates are going to fall, based on what? Certainly, if we go into a recession in this country into next year or, or whenever that could be, I would expect interest rates to come down because that's typically what's happens in a recession is sort of spur the economy forward. But I don't see any experts right now saying home prices are gonna fall. So I think it's an education uh, point more than anything else. Joel is saying in the 80s, we saw the highest interest rates ever. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now that inflation is soaring You know, I, I think trying to, so, so the question is with high inflation right now, will we see interest rates go higher? I, I'm not here right now to try to bring a crystal ball and say how high will they go, but I, I will tell you this, those that follow the market are watching. They don't know how high they will go. It, it's uh, all about, you know, uncertainty in the world, the war in the Ukraine with Russia and the Ukraine. It's all about inflation right now. It's about the Fed's response to that inflation. So many things that are bearing down. I wouldn't want to speculate on, on how high they would go, but you know, no doubt uh, the, the line I would be using with my customers right now is inflation is the enemy of long-term interest rates. As long as you see high inflation, you're going to see interest rates rise. Um, Leanna is asking, can I use the five-year American bond yield mortgage rate by the 
Oh gosh. Uh, so Canadian customers, I don't have the answer to that. We don't provide information for, for uh, Canada, but that's a great question. Don't, don't have the answer to that. And then one more, Celeste is saying, can you speak to how to address why so many sellers are lowering the price? Oh, yeah. That's a great question, Celeste. So um, Celeste is asking a question, why so many sellers are making price adjustments right now? I think there are a couple of things. And I've seen some videos on this out, great agents that are making videos on it. I think a couple of things I would do if I was you to be prepared for those conversations. First, I would look at days on market locally in my MLS and say, how quickly are things selling? Across the country, things are still selling very, very quickly. Uh, and I would look at what are things, you know, multiple offer scenario, what's selling above list price in your area. I think predominantly uh, the, the, the price corrections um, that are being made right now are being made on homes that were overpriced. This, this reinforces the point of pricing your home right. You know, we did a graphic on this on the KCM Instagram. If, you go, if you're not following KCM on Instagram, go there and, and follow that and grab that graphic and put that out there. The importance of pricing your home right. Here's what I know. Any home today that's priced right is selling quickly. So I think it's all about, uh, about pricing right. That's it. All right. So let me go back to this. Let me tell you this. If you haven't tried Real Talk, I want you to go in and try it. If you haven't registered for the webinar yet, go in and register for that webinar and get on video. It is the way to communicate a message now. It is what we know. Social media algorithms are prioritizing video over uh, any other form of content. So you want to get video content out there. As always, I'm grateful for everybody that joins the deep dive from all over the country. Uh, and thank you for that. Thank you for the time you invest each morning to be the educator, be the knowledge broker for the clients you serve. And we'll see you back next week. Take care.